some updates about some upcoming projects we have here at RTD um, that will impact the community and, and many of the uh, customers and individuals that you engage with. So we appreciate you being here to learn more about these projects and some of the exciting initiatives that we have underway. Next slide. So we have one hour set aside for this morning's meeting and we really appreciate all of you being here. Uh, we are recording this meeting, so if any of you are unable to uh, stay for the entire time, we will share the recording later. If you have questions during this meeting, we ask that you use the chat feature. Uh, we have a moderator who will ask all the questions on behalf of the participants. We think this will help it uh, flow a little bit more smoothly. And so if you do have questions throughout the presentation, feel free to drop them in the chat. Uh, any questions that we're not able to get to during today's presentation, uh, our plan is to put those onto our project webpage, and we'll talk about that project webpage a little bit later, but we have a frequently asked questions section on that page, and so we'll add questions that are asked during today's meeting uh, to the content on that website. Also, a follow-up email will be sent this afternoon, so we will send you an email with lots of links and resources and other information as just a reminder and give you direct access to the, the topics that we discussed today to help you in the future. Next slide. So today, I'm just going to start with a quick overview of RTD. I think a lot of us are well aware. We'll talk about a, a couple of projects that are happening this summer. Um, we'll talk about our service changes that will go into effect later in May, um, give an update about our transit police, talk about an exciting initiative that we have underway called Impact Team, and then we'll have a conversation at the end about how you can support us and what we can do to support you better. Next slide. All right, I want to start with a little overview of the agency. Next slide. So as we're all aware, uh, we are the regional transit provider for the Denver metro area, approximately 65 million boardings last year. Our service area is eight counties and more than 40 municipalities. So it's a large service area serving approximately 3 million people. Next slide. One of the things that we've been focused on this, this last year is what we call strategic initiatives. And we have three of these strategic initiatives underway at RTD, and these tie into what we'll talk about today. The first is back to basics, second, people power, and third, welcoming transit environment. Next slide. So back to basics is, is really trying to ensure that our assets are maintained in a state of good repair, um, having sound asset management principles, and then also enhancing the communications efforts, both internally and externally, to ensure that individuals are engaged. Next slide. We also have a focus on people power. You often hear about shortages of operators and mechanics and other individuals at, at RTD. And so we've been actively addressing some of these impediments to employee recruitment, trying to ensure that we have the workforce necessary to deliver on our transit, uh, focusing on a culture of learning and development, and then also trying to ensure that our employees feel engaged and promoting opportunities that will enforce their retention at the agency. Next slide. And then also today we'll talk a little bit about our efforts related to a welcoming transit environment. And so we're really focused on enhancing uh, the situations that uh, limit a safe, convenient and enjoyable experience for our customers and employees, ensure that everyone feels personally safe and secure as they use the system, and then some updates to our customer code of conduct that were put in place last year that we really want to ensure that individuals using <laughs> RTD services uh, are able to uh, reach their destination in a safe and convenient manner. Next slide. So I'm going to start and talk a little bit about a state of good repair. Next slide. So ensuring that our assets are in state of good repair is one of our highest priorities here at RTD. Uh, it ensures that previous investments that have been made in the system remain intact, uh, that things are operationally safe, accessible, dependable. Uh, we also want to make sure that they are in alignment with all of our regulatory oversight entities. And then all transit agencies should undertake projects that maintain their assets. Next slide. So here at RTD, we have more than 9 billion um, in fixed assets. And these are all guided by what we call our transit asset management plan or our TAM plan. And all of our assets are in varying ages of useful life. And so we'll talk about our downtown loop in a minute as one of the assets that we are investing in. Um, all of our assets are regularly monitored. And so this includes things like facilities, vehicles, uh, our track, signals, bridges, stations, anything that we want to make sure is included in this asset management plan to ensure that it is uh, maintained in the right way. 
Next slide. So one of the topics that uh, we want to primarily focus on today is what we are calling the downtown rail reconstruction project. Next slide. And I'm sure a lot of you have heard about this project. We've been uh, heavily promoting it starting in late February, but it really focuses this first phase on what we call the downtown loop. And this is part of our, our first light rail line that opened in October of 1994. It is now 30 years old, which is hard to believe, and it's currently uh, serving the D, H, and L lines. And so as we're all well aware, this downtown loop has a lot of light rail traffic every day, 365 days a year, that are serving customers in this loop. Next slide. So the downtown loop operates in a street running capacity instead of a dedicated right away, as you'd see elsewhere on the system. Uh, a lot of public utilities exist under this rail alignment that have to be taken in consideration as we undertake this project. And then we use what we call paved track in this downtown loop versus open ballasted track that you might see elsewhere. Next slide. I think it's important to note that uh, there's been a number of previous downtown projects that RTD has undertaken over the years to ensure that we're maintaining assets in a state of good repair. And so we've spent about $20 million on a, a number of isolated projects starting in 2012. And so these have been very targeted, isolated, like I mentioned, things like uh, switches and crossings and signals. Um, but now we are focused on what we're calling a full depth reconstruction here in the downtown loop. Next slide. So this reconstruction project was prioritized, as I mentioned, to maintain our assets in a state of good repair. Uh, this section of track is reaching 30 years. It's the 30th anniversary later this year, and so it's now reached its useful life. This work is emphasizing a planned closure versus these unplanned service disruptions that, that may have occurred in the past. We want to make sure that we're not inconveniencing customers significantly, and so trying to get ahead of things and plan it out in a very expeditious manner. Uh, as part of this project, there will be four phases that will occur over the next couple of years, with the first phase, phase one, happening this year at five street intersections where the at-grade rail uh, crosses with these intersections. And I'll show a, a diagram in just a minute. The entirety of this project is $152 million, um, which has been set aside for planning, design, legal consultancy, construction, and project management. Next slide. So I mentioned this is our first reconstruction project of this magnitude. Uh, this is the first time we're undertaking this, so we want to make sure we're being highly communicative. We want to ensure that everyone that uh, uses the system, all of our customers are well aware of the impact to services. Um, we also want to make sure that uh, we're doing this in a way that doesn't impact the downtown area of Denver and that individuals are still able to access businesses and services in this downtown uh, business district. Next slide. So the phase one of the five intersections will happen starting in uh, late May, going through mid-September. Um, we've been working with the city and county of Denver to discuss plans for street closures, develop traffic detour plans. I have some of my colleagues on the call with me today who will be able to answer any questions that individuals may have related to these topics specifically, but we wanna ensure that we're doing this in a way that's collaborative with anyone that may be impacted, including local businesses and other service agencies. Next slide. So here's a, an illustration, a, a map of these uh, five intersections as phase one. So Stoughton 15th, Californian 15th, Stoughton 17th, Californian 17th, and Broadway and Welton are the five intersections that we're talking about. This is where uh, the light rail track has an intersection with vehicular traffic. And so we need to do that full depth reconstruction at these five intersections in 2024. Next slide. I mentioned that there are four phases. Phase two happening next year will include what we call our downtown loop mid block. So this is going back between the intersections to do a full depth reconstruction of the tangent track, the straight track that wasn't previously replaced, uh, continuing to impact the D, H and L lines in 2025. Next slide. Phase three uh, has the project going out on what we call our Colfax alignment. So this will exclude any of the track near the Colorado Convention Center, but have an impact on the D and H lines next year. And then next slide, phase four is going out the Welton Street corridor. So a full depth reconstruction of the track uh, going out Welton corridor with an impact to the L line. And then also evaluating station accessibility um, along the L line. 
Next slide. So I mentioned there'll be impact to the D, H, and L line. So during this project, starting on May 26th through the middle of September, um, impacted rail lines, the D and H, all services will go to Denver Union Station. So starting at 10th and Osage, instead of turning into the, the downtown loop, all of the D and H line trains will move into Denver Union Station. L line service will be suspended during this project this summer with bus route 43, an alternative. And I have uh, another colleague on the call who will talk a little bit about service changes in a minute and can answer additional questions related to bus and rail impacts. Next slide. You know, to ensure that all of our customers and community and the public are well aware, um, I mentioned that we, we started communicating about this project in late February. Um, we have a website dedicated, rtd-denver.com slash rail project. This is where we want anyone that has questions, any of your customers, the individuals you work with, uh, businesses, go to this website. This page will be frequently updated with information as the project advances through the summer. Uh, there are a number of illustrations and graphics and maps and FAQs and resources on this web page right now. And I mentioned we'll continue to update it in the future. We've also identified 250 uh, tactics that we'll be undertaking as an agency to ensure that uh, we are engaging with the community and uh, being highly com communicative. So we'll put out banners at all of the impacted rail stations. There'll be digital signage. We have a paid marketing campaign, social media, a number of PR strategies, mass emails, just a lot of things underway to ensure that everybody is well aware of this project. We also have plans in early May to visit any of the businesses adjacent to the downtown loop to ensure that they're also aware of some of these impacts to services and, and answer any questions that they may have. Um, we also have an English and Spanish toolkit available on the web page right now that you can download that has information about the project. And I'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. Next slide. We are also hosting a number of these community open house meetings, and these are open to anyone that may have questions about any of the projects that RTD has underway this summer. Um, and so these are open to anyone in the community. Um, English, the meetings will be held in English and Spanish. And I want to note that if there is a need, um, we want you to reach out to us and, and share with us that maybe there's additional meetings that are needed to reach a certain member, uh, certain community group or uh, a certain corner of the service area. Uh, there's one tonight at 530 here at RTD's headquarters. Uh, we had one earlier this month out in Lone Tree, and then we have three more planned in the next couple of weeks. But as I mentioned, if additional meetings are needed, please reach out to us and we're happy to, to facilitate anything that would help engage the community better. Next slide. Um, I'm going to quickly talk about the coping panels project as well. This is a, a separate project from the downtown loop uh, that will impact services uh, this summer. Next slide. So as many of you are probably aware, we began a two year project last year to uh, repair the caps on the top of retaining walls. And this project has to happen uh, during warm weather months due to the sealant that's applied. Um, about half of the maintenance work was completed last year. The project's been separated into what we call nine segments along the alignment. And the challenge is trains have to single track around work crews that are working on these retaining walls. And so even though there's double track along that alignment, the trains have to move and go on a single track in both directions when we have work crews uh, on that alignment with their equipment. Next slide. So we've heard a lot about service impacts, and so I just want to note, and I mentioned that my colleague will uh, is also on this call, Jesse Carter, um, who will be able to answer some questions if you have follow up um, later. But our line frequency will continue at 30 minute headways. E and H line trains will move to one hour uh, headways during this project this summer between May 26th and mid September. Um, last year when we did this project, uh, we heard a lot of feedback about uh, the E and H line trains and the frequency. And so we've adjusted to this one hour headway uh, in an effort to ensure on time performance, uh, limit train times waiting at stations for other trains to pass. And so we feel this will be a better schedule that will serve customers uh, with that on time performance. This graph here on the on the uh, screen shows any train north of Southmore will have at least uh, two trains each hour, an E and an H. So any of the stations that are served by both an E and H line um, will have two trains every hour serving into Denver Union Station. Next slide. 
this is just a quick timeline of the project. We will conclude this project this fall, and so uh, we appreciate everyone's patience during this two year project as we've made these necessary uh, repairs uh, along the alignment near I-25. Next slide. All right, I'm going to pause there um, and ask if there are any questions related to some of these uh, maintenance and construction projects that we've had underway. And I will ask Marta Sepecki, our senior manager of public relations and communications, if there's any questions that have come in. Marta. There have not been any questions come in so far. OK, we'll keep monitoring that. Please feel free to put uh, questions in the chat if there's things that we can address. Thank you, Marta. All right, I'm going to turn the time now over to Jesse Carter, our senior manager of service development to talk about our service changes that are coming up. Jesse. Stuart, right yeah. before we change, um, the question did come up. Okay. Uh, where does the money for the maintenance come from? Great question. So this money was set aside uh, in our FY24 budget. And so this is just part of our ongoing maintenance projects, capital improvement projects that are necessary for uh, undertaking these efforts. And I will ask Jeet, who I saw on the call, if he has anything additional to add to that. Stuart, uh, Jeet Desai, Manager Engineering Constructions. I concur these projects as a part of uh, extending the service life of our assets have been identified in FY224 uh, budget. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, Marta? All right, Jesse, let's go ahead. OK, thank you, Stuart. I just want to make sure everyone can hear me. Um, I don't have the best mic in the world. OK, I see one head nod. OK, with that, to say that our service changes occur three times per year. Uh, they typically occur in January, May, uh, August slash September. Uh, sometimes we go a little bit early in August to accommodate school startup times. Uh, this May, uh, May 2024, we'll be implementing a number of minor and major changes, some related to the downtown rail reconstruction project and others being more typical of what we do this time of year. Uh, the service changes enable our representative employees, our frontline employees, the ability to vote different work, and also at the same time, it allows our staff to do much needed analysis to increase on-time performance. Uh, like I said before, we're also with May, as typical, we are reducing our services that uh, are set up to provide tripper service for our schools. And at the same time, we're also preparing for the near-term maintenance and reconstruction. Next slide, please. So uh, just so you know, I'm not going to read every single one of these uh, as far as each one of the uh, bus service changes, but I do want to point out a couple of them. Uh, the first one on the list as far as bus, the 0L, we will be extending midday service on the 0L to increase access to the downtown area with the uh, rail lines being detoured. Also, there'll be other changes made to the free mall ride and reintroduction of the free metro ride, uh, and those we'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, however, there are some major changes that occur, of course, with rail, as described earlier by Stewart, with the D, E, H, uh, and L lines suspended, and the R line and W lines having service span uh, changes as well. I should note that all of our light rail lines will have service span changes. Next slide, please. Okay, as I mentioned before, all light rail lines, so everything on this list except for the N line, is a light rail line will have service span adjustment. The service span adjustments are meant to address maintenance, maintenance of way time. So that's our maintenance of way that occurs on a regular basis. What we're doing here is we're not going as early during Sunday through Thursday services. We are starting instead of at 2.30 and 3 a.m., we're starting later at 5 a.m. on those service days. So starting with the D-line, as Stuart mentioned, uh, the D-line will be detoured to serve the DUS or Denver Union Station rather than going downtown the downtown loop. The E-line, the E-line will uh, have one hour frequencies as Stuart also described very well, um, and that's to accommodate the coping panel project. The H-line will, which is a service that normally goes into the downtown loop, but instead go to Denver Union Station. And the L-line, uh, as mentioned, and we can't mention it enough, the L-line will be suspended uh, for the time period that the, the downtown rail reconstruction project is in play. The inline, we do have one trip that we're going to extend on the inline. In that is a commuter rail service. And on the R line, we will have on-time performance and schedule adjustments and some adjustments made to allow for the coping panel project. 
Also with the WW line, we are having a, a service plan, a service span adjustment as well. Next slide, please. So going into a little more of the bus changes that we have, the free metro ride and free mall ride. We are reducing the level of frequency on the free mall ride. It's currently on a detour using 15th and 17th streets. Uh, because of that, we'll likely have an additional detour to our current detour, uh, which led us or is the emphasis for us um, implementing the free metro ride. And the free metro ride, as you may know, was a service that we started back in 2014, uh, providing service along 18th and 19th from DUS, the Civic Center Station. We'll be operating that service on a 10 minute frequency, and we'll also be operating the free mall ride on a 10 minute frequency. Um, we're able to operate the free metro ride uh, largely due to the fact that we're reducing the level of service frequency on the on the free mall ride. So with that, i um, like to open to any questions. Mart, are there any questions that have come in for Jesse? There have not been any questions thus far. OK, yeah, if anyone has questions, feel free to drop them in the chat and Marta will let us know. But Jesse, I appreciate the update. Um, Pauline, next slide. I now want to turn it over to our Deputy Chief of Police, Steve Martingano, to give us an update about Transit Police. Deputy Chief. Yeah, good morning. You just got on mute again. Deputy All right, Chief. there we go. Um, I'm just going to give a brief summary of our, our, our RTD Transit Police Department. Uh, for many of that don't know, we have really been growing our police department here in the last couple of years. 2022, we only had 19 police officers. Here in the last year and a half, we have hired 60 post-certified police officers, which means they're certified by the state of Colorado, and they're out, they're out there right now, um, you know, being visible and, and out within our system. Um, and we have 19 uh, recruits. We've never hired police recruits before, but right now we have 19 recruits that are in the police academy. They were they are in three different police academies, and, and we'll be graduating uh, different dates in May. Um, they'll have to then go through an FTO process, but hopefully by midsummer we'll uh, we'll be over you know close to 80. If and we continue to hire, we we are actually hiring more and more lateral officers, which means they have that post certification. The goal is to be about 120 come um, summertime, and I think we're we're on pace to do that. Um, and then for those that don't know, you know, do uh, we also have a good um, robust mental health clinician program with the first one in, in the country to do offer this on public transportation. Right now we have two mental health clinicians um, and we have four more that have just we just signed a contract. We have two clinicians with them with the uh, well power, which used to be the mental health center in Denver. Uh, we have four more that are going to be hired uh, contracted through the Jefferson Center for Mental Health. Um, we have one homeless outreach coordinator, um, and then and then we are going to hire four more. And again, that's through the Jefferson Center for Mental Health. So that contract all got uh, signed and completed about a week and a half ago, and they are uh, currently uh, actively recruiting for those positions. Um, and then starting May, uh, we we will have a you know we have enough uh, personnel now that we will be going 24 hours a day. We did have a couple hours of break at, on our current schedule. Um, and we, you know, we relied on outside police jurisdictions to assist us during those times. But um, come May, with the with the manpower that we have, uh, we'll be at 24 hours a day uh, supporting our, our our customers and our and our facilities and properties. Next slide is. So uh, what we did is, for those that don't know, we're over 2,300 square miles that we service RTD. This is a large area to cover. So we broke up our our. Um, service area into five sectors, um, you know, and they're pretty much broken down. Sector one and two um, rely are mostly our commuter rail, and that's we have a police dispatch uh, communication center that handles that. So that's our sectors one and two, and then three and four um, are our second police dispatch center, which which deal mostly with light rail and buses. Um, and then in the middle, sector five, that's our smallest sector, but populated wise, that's the, you know, in, in central Denver there with Union Station, Civic. Um, so that's actually our most populated and calls of service. Um, so that is a, that we, we broke that into a smaller sector, but um, it, it's it's going to be staffed, so, you know, um, with good resources just because of the amount of, of individuals that, that ride our trains and, and come to uh, Union Station either in or out. And again, you can go ahead and go on our our. our um, online, go to RTD's website, uh, put in transit police and the, and the sector map will pull up. 
and then you could actually zoom in and out depending on where you live, where you work, and find out who your commander is for that area. So it's a really great uh, tool to use, and then you could email them directly with any problems or issues uh, so that it's, it's almost immediate attention. Uh, for those that, that do ride our system, our uh, Transit Watch app continues to be really popular. Uh, we continue to grow our, our subscribers. Um, it's a it's a text based app. It's free um, on either Apple or, or Google. And again, text based, which is really um, convenient for the, when you are on our trains or buses, so you don't have to be on the phone and, and talking out loud and, and telling the incident when that individual might be in front of you. So um, that goes to uh, real live police communications dispatchers. Um, so you're going to, you know, when you text it in, you're going to talk to a live person through the text based. You could choose to be anonymous, but um, but, you know, we might reach out to you for any updates and depending. We, we always ask you to make sure you try to be as detailed as you can. So, you know, we know which resources to send. We still do have a security um, officer contingent and we don't want to send a security officer when we should be sending a police officer. Um, or vice versa. So just try to be as detailed as you can, and we might get some follow up questions from that person to make sure we're sending the right resources. And we do now have a Spanish version, so um, that's really helpful. Or you could go ahead and call um, directly into our dispatch at 303-299-2911, um, or you know you could text 303-434-9100. Next slide. Um, as as many know, we have a customer code of conduct. Um, that was revised in 2023 um, and you know really it's a respect the ride it's now called you know it's it's for you know it's for our customers it's, it gives um you know really good information on on expectations when you're riding and how to treat and respect your your fellow customer as well as rtd property um, again you could go ahead and use utilize the transit watch app if you're seeing something that falls within the customer code of conduct and want to you know send that to us um, please do so, but it's really it's used to you know deter illegal activities, um, you know try to limit disruptive behaviors, and just again as it states in the slide, you know just common courtesy with your fellow customer and riders. Um, and you know when we when we contact somebody, um, you know especially when it comes to. Uh, our customer code of conduct, what we like to do is first educate somebody. You know, if they have their feet up on their chairs, they're taking four or five seats, they're doing something that, you know, we ask customers not to do. Uh, you know, we will contact and educate that, that individual, tell them why they shouldn't be doing that behavior, um, and really just try to get compliance. And people sometimes just don't know, right? Especially if they're from other states and they may be able to do things on their public transportation that they can't do here at RTD. So, we, you know, that is usually our first approach. Um, again, resource connections. Um, we try to utilize our mental health cl clinicians and our homeless outreach coordinators because that really our goal is when we contact individuals that might be displaying a mental health issue, um, you know, or might not have a, a you know, somewhere to go. Um, facility wise, you know, we want to tell them what, you know, where we have our options, where they have options at, where the outreach organizations are. Um, so, you know, we do, we have uh, pamphlets that we put together that give um, resources available within our 2300 square miles. So, you know, that, that's the tool we use with our operators and our security and police team. And really then, you know, sometimes we do have to take enforcement. We hope that's our last option most times. Sometimes it is our first option depending on, on the circumstance. But again, our main goal here is, is really to provide customer service, even within the police department, educate and, and try to get to people to the resources they need. So I think that's it on my slide. So I'll happy to take any questions. Thank you, Deputy Chief. Marta, are there any questions that have come in or, or questions there, for Deputy Chief? There is a question. Carly asks or says that transit seems to be the, the shelterer of the very last resort through no fault of your own. I wonder if RTD has involved the affordable housing community formerly as a way for long-term case management. Can the state dedicate some affordable housing resources to these folks? This shouldn't be just an RTD problem. If we have drug use on or in RTD facilities, what kind of environmental mitigation must be done? How much does it cost and who pays? Yeah, that's a, that's a lot of questions in one there. So I will I will definitely handle the police side of the house and, and talk a little bit on the societal issues. I mean, we, we have to remember this is public transportation. So, you know, a lot of the public do, do utilize this. Um, you know, a lot of individuals take our trains and buses to get to resource needs, uh, maybe seeing their clinicians. Um, so 
you know, we do work very closely with a lot of the outreach organizations. You know, we do have uh, within our, you know, within our 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 um, policies, we do have a suspension program. So if someone is a, a frequent, um, you know, they bear enforcement evader, um, or if they do a, some type of criminal act, or they or they violate our customer code of conduct, we do have the ability to suspend them for anywhere from thirty days up to lifetime, depending on how egregious you know the incident is. Uh, but we do work with those. Um, you know, those outreach organizations to make sure we're not taking away transportation for, you know, for someone that has, is suffering a medical condition. Um, you know, drugs, obviously, you know, the usage of drugs, and I'm not here to get into a political, um, you know, conversation, but, you know, it has been downgraded in regards to the decriminalization of, of you know, it could becoming a felony to a misdemeanor. That is some of the issues we face at RTD is it's, it, it is not a high priority for a lot of the cities and, and counties, um, but it is a high priority for our customers. So that is why we are extend, expanding our police department. Um, you know, these are issues that affect our customers, our employees every day, and, you know, we need to take charge on that. Um, and so that's why we're growing, you know, in that fashion. Hopefully we'll get to a, a numbers that, that you'll see a huge difference. We're seeing it every day. Uh, we ask for a little bit of patience on that side of the house, but um, but I can tell you that, you know, utilize our Transit Watch app, utilize our ability to, to reach out to your sector commanders. We need to know time, dates and times, your our eyes and ears out there. Uh, so whatever information you can give us, then we, we will make sure that we're deploying the resources to, you know, adequately to what people are seeing out there, so. Thank you, Deputy Chief. And I'll also add to the second part of this question about uh, environmental mitigation strategies that must be undertaken for illicit drug use in facilities. Um, I think many of you are aware of our downtown Boulder station, which had to undergo some uh, uh, mitigation uh, last year before we could reopen it earlier this year. And so those are efforts that RT paid for. Um, we also enhanced the HVAC unit, added higher fan, uh, larger fans in the restroom facilities where a lot of that illicit drug use was uh, being done so that we could have outside air access and so it wasn't being pulled into the HVAC of the entire facility. Uh, these are things that we're monitoring. We're working with CDPHE uh, at the state of Colorado to ensure that uh, we're in alignment with what their recommendations are for environmental hazards and, and illicit drug use in facilities. Uh, something that we're coordinating with them closely to ensure that, that we're providing a, a safe environment for all of our customers and employees. Marta, are there any other questions that have come in on the chat? There is, um, and this is gonna go back to Jesse. Uh, this comes from Mike. Uh, going back to service changes, will the maintenance project changes free up operators? If so, how are they being deployed? Oh, that's an excellent question. Um, it doesn't actually free up, although we are reducing uh, heavy frequencies, we have a shortage of light rail operators. So we have what's called an extra board and our extra board numbers aren't as high as we would like them. So likely the, the operators that are not, that have not voted work, that it wasn't available to them will end up on our extra board. And that allows for services to be covered uh, due to uh, workers being out ill or, or for other reasons. At the same time on the bus side, um, as I mentioned before, the free Metro ride is being provided by way of reduction of service on the free mall ride. Uh, so pretty much we're stealing from Peter to pay Paul uh, in a sense, as far as our bus routes are concerned. There'll also be a number of um, uh, detours that will occur uh, in and around the downtown Dem Denver area that will require more of our extra board operators to be out there. And we will be employing uh, loop, what we call loop extras, which are buses that are uh, that are um, put in service to cover up uh, or cover work that's missed. So we'll be doing that for the, the free Metro ride as well. So it's going to require more operators actually this go around than we are currently that we than we currently have on the bus side and on the rail side at this point. I, I hope that answers your question. Thank you, Jesse. Appreciate the response. Uh, let's go to the next slide, and if there's additional questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. Uh, we're going to shift gears a little bit and talk about a new initiative underway here at RTD that we call the Impact Team. Next slide. So a lot of uh, transit agencies have some sort of an ambassador program. We are launching one next month that we call our Impact Team. 
And so we will be deploying um, some of our employees across the system to support customers as part of a pilot through September 2024. And so these employees will be dispatched to assist customers at different stops and stations that may be impacted by major events, peak service times, uh, some of the uh, May service uh, changes and, and detours that are underway. It's all focused on enhancing the customer experience, ensuring customers have the information they need so they can plan their trip and, and, and have an enjoyable experience. Uh, the impact team will be able to answer frequently asked questions, provide trip information in real time, and show customers how to sign up for service alerts or purchase fare, or just answer any questions that may, they may have uh, so that they don't have any barriers to their success while using RTD. We're going to run this pilot through the end of September, and then in October, uh, we'll gather together, assess the team's overall impact, and then make plans for its permanency. We want to make sure that this is something that we continue in the future. Uh, we feel that this will be very valuable in serving um, our customers out on RTD's uh, system. One thing that I we would love to ask all of you is, if you are aware of an area, a stop or a station where maybe uh, this team should be dispatched, or if there's a major event that uh, you are organizing in our service area that you anticipate will have, you know, an impact to a large volume of customers and, and uh, you know, we need to have some of these ambassadors uh, dispatched at that part of uh, the system for that event. Let us know. Uh, we're putting together the schedule for the summer. Obviously, it'll be a lot of the major concerts and uh, sports related events that will happen in the downtown area. But we also want to make, be cognizant of if there's other areas across the system where these uh, impact team ambassadors could be dispatched to support you know, that welcoming uh, transit environment that we're trying to sustain here at RTD. Next slide. All right, so we're now kind of to the conclusion. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about how all of you can support RTD. Next slide. So we've put together a partner toolkit that's available right now. We would love all of you to be an extension of our team. All of you have different community groups that you engage with, members of our community, organizations and businesses. And so we would love if you could help us share this information and updates with those that you come in contact with. The Partner Toolkit, as I mentioned, is available online on our RHEL project website. It's available right off the homepage of rtd-denver.com. Uh, resources are available in English and Spanish. If there are other languages that are needed, please let us know. We will get those translated so that we can provide this information uh, to any community groups that may have a need. These toolkits have maps and illustrations, FAQs. Uh, there's photos and B-roll that you can utilize, uh, sample media posts for social media. So we really want to make sure that you can just plug and play, use this content, adapt it, adopt it for your needs, and help us to communicate some of this information. Next slide. And then to conclude, um, just a conversation. What can we do to support all of you? What are the, the needs that you have out there or different communication opportunities that we're not thinking about or possibly not thinking about that uh, we should put on our list? Stuart, yes. uh, there was a comment that came in that said uh, from Jennifer, Vietnamese would also be helpful for our community. We will add that to the list. Thank you, Jennifer. Uh, currently, our website's available um, in Vietnamese, but we will make sure that these resource materials are also translated. Thank you for uh, that feedback, Jennifer. Appreciate it. Another comment just came in from Carly. Digital uh, literacy uh, skills or help with website and app. That's a great one, um, Carly. And maybe uh, we can connect offline to have a conversation about maybe some of those ideas you have around that. One of the things that uh, the impact team will be doing is going out to show individuals how to use our apps, how to call the uh, a telephone information center for those that may not have access to a smartphone or a device, but how they can still contact our, our agents to receive help over the phone. So we're, we're working through some of those things, but Carly, I'd love to connect if you have some additional ideas about some of that digital literacy that may be needed in the community, because that's, that's a great point. Thank you. Anything else we can do to support all of you? OK, as I mentioned at the beginning, we have recorded uh, this presentation. All the presentation materials will be shared uh, in an email out with all of you. And so we will put this together, uh, send that email later this afternoon with all the links and resources. You can go to our RHEL, our RHEL project website right now 
and downloading these materials that you may need access to right now, but we'll send all that information out in an email later today. Uh, we appreciate all of you joining us. If you have any questions, um, feel free to respond to the email that was the invitation to this meeting. Um, our team is tracking all those emails, and so if you have a follow-up question you weren't able to ask today, please send it in in an email and we'll get a response back to you. All right, thank you all. We appreciate it. If you have questions, let us know. If not, have a wonderful rest of your day. Tina, I see your hands raised. Hey, um, Stuart, there's a comment about um, Arabic and Russian as well. Okay. And I, I just also want to note that we, I know that our website, if you drive people to the website, does have the ability to translate some of this content into Russian right now as well, right? So if people are going to the website, we can, they can get this information in Russian, but we can also look at translating the fact sheets and some of this content as well. Thank you, Tina. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. All right. Everyone have a safe rest of your day, a wonderful day, and we'll talk to you later.